bless his holy name. He's worthy to be praised, he's worthy to be adored, he's worthy to be magnified. He's great, he's wonderful. There's no one like him. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Oh, thank you, my Lord. We bless your holy name. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Ancient of Days. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Savior. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Thank you, Lord of Hosts. Lord strong and mighty, mighty in battle, King of glory himself, we worship you, we adore you, we give you all glory, we give you all honor, we give you all adoration, blessed be your name forever and ever, blessed be your name forever and ever, thank you daddy, Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please lift your voices to him and say, Father, The way you killed Ebola, kill Lassa fever. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Just kill it. Kill it tonight, Lord. Kill Lassa fever right now. Just the way you killed Ebola, kill last of fever tonight Lord feel it completely just kill this demon kill it once and for all never to resurface Rakushin Dramahokotunda kill last of fever tonight Lord Yes, Lord. Feel it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And then you're going to pray a prayer for yourself and say, Father, whatever will not allow me to pray tonight, destroy it right away. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Anything that will shut my mouth, anything that will not allow me to pray tonight, destroy it straight away, destroy it right away, Lord. I've not come here to joke tonight, Lord. I've come to pray. Whatever will not allow me to pray, Destroy it right away, Lord. Destroy it straight away.
thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, your mercy endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. Amen. King of glory, the Lord, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord of hosts, the one who never lost a war. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you've done for us since the beginning of the year. Thank you for what you will do for the rest of the year. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, my Father and my God, your children are here. We are here for total victory. Give us absolute victory in Jesus' name. The children all over the world who because of distance cannot come wherever they may be in Australia, in Papua New Guinea in Haiti, in America all over the world Father as they are listening in right now give them their victory in Jesus name before the sun rises tomorrow let every one of us sing the song of victory. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout a big hallelujah. shake hands with two or three people and tell them God will arise for you tonight and then you may please be seated um, except those who are born in the month of February if you are born in February, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Rise on your feet as we pray. Father, I just want to thank you for all your children born in the month of February. 
thank you for keeping them alive to see another month and another year. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Because February is the second month in the year. I commit all these your children into your hands. Double their blessings. Double their promotions. Double their testimonies. Double their anointing. Double their service to you. Give them a new beginning. And just let it be well with them. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. If you are born in February, shout another hallelujah. I want to thank God for the choir. You did a wonderful job tonight. But I want you to come back. We want to sing one of the songs you sang. Uh, you see, I've always told you that the problem with the coach is that your coach is not necessarily your friend. Uh, your friend is satisfied with you the way you are. But the coach will keep on pushing you until you attain excellence. You sang the, the first song, Redeemed by the Blood. And then you got to a verse that was led by a baritone. I expect that the next verse will be led by a soprano. You have to balance the two. So get a soprano to sing the next verse after the baritone. So let, let's have the song from... Uh, have you selected the soprano? Oh, all right, okay. Now let's have the song from the beginning. Everybody.
Thank you, thank you. That's the way it should be. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause. Oh, yes. How many of you want to excel? Who want to be the very, very best? Well, I shout an excellent hallelujah. Almost 30 years ago, I was in London preparing the Sunday school booklet for the mission. And suddenly I heard my father in heaven speak. And he said, Son, what, what will you want for your birthday? And since I wasn't sure it would be that God would be interested in birthdays, particularly my own, I said, Lord, if that is you, could you please repeat the question? He said, it's, it's me. I said, what do you want for your birthday? I said, what I want, Lord, is that every member of my congregation will receive a miracle. He said, is that all? I said, that's all. He said, okay, when you get home, call them together. And I will give them what they want. That was the beginning of the Holy Ghost service. Next month will be exactly 30 years. That the Holy Ghost service started. It is not a program that a man just decided to do. I didn't dream it. I didn't plan for it. It's a program born from the heart of God himself. That's why it has survived 30 years. That's why it's growing stronger year by year. So next month, by the grace of God, we'll have the 30th anniversary of the Holy Ghost service from March 3 to March 5. And the theme this year will be the winning side. So if I were you, I would tell all my friends, all my colleagues, even my enemies, because if they come next month, they will become friends. I have a strong feeling, rather, that God will repeat what he did the first time ever that we had the Holy Ghost service. Give everybody a miracle. In 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14 to 19, 2 Kings 13, verse 14 to 19, an incident happened. Yeah, yeah, this is just introduction. We are yet to get to the old, the real something. A king came to Elisha when Elisha was dying. And by then, Elisha was, according to Bible scholars, about 120 years old. And the king said, what am I going to do? You are my father. You are the one looking after this nation. You are about to die. What do I do? Elisha said, well, take your bow and arrow. The king took it. Elisha laid his hand on the hand of the king and he asked him to shoot. 
through the open window. He shot, and Elisha prophesied and said that the arrow of deliverance. Then he asked him to take the arrow and smite the ground. And he smote the ground three times and stopped. And Elisha was angry. He said, who asked you to stop? He said, you should have kept going till I asked you to stop. Then your victory would have been total. He said, but now because you stopped after three strikes, you will have only three victories. And I would have thought that the king would say, ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my father, I'm sorry, daddy, please, let me continue to strike. But he struck three times and stopped. Tonight I'm going to ask you to pray. If you like, pray three times and stop. Because I, I sent a warning yesterday to those of you who came for the Holy Communion service. If you are not ready to pray, don't come today. It's not too late to go now. Because tonight we are going to pray. What are we going to do tonight? I can't even hear you. Mm -hmm. Good. We want to talk about arresting arresters. Our text is taken from Second King chapter 6. From verse 13 to 20. And while you are opening your Bibles, I want to thank God for my son who spoke before me because he had laid a good foundation. I think we should give the Lord a big round of applause for him. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 13 to 20. The story actually began from verse 8. The king wanted to fight against the king of Israel and uh, while he was planning his plan was being leaked to the man of God who leaked the information to the to his king so the ambush of the enemy failed so the king was the enemy was uh, upset and he called a council meeting he said who is the spy here telling the king of Israel all that was happening. And one of his servants said, no, 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 there's no spy here. <laughs> there is a prophet in Israel. Everything you are discussing in your bedroom is hearing. So we pick up the story from there, verse 13. And he said, the enemy said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. I like this king. He has respect for the man of God. He wanted to arrest only one man. He sent a whole army. I like that. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. And 
when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And God is going to smite some enemies with blindness tonight. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. They came to arrest Elisha. But Elisha arrested them. Tonight, all your arresters shall be arrested. God has a purpose for your life. God never sent anyone into the world without a purpose. Jeremiah chapter 1. Verses 4 and 5. Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5. The Bible says, Before I formed thee, I knew thee. While you were seeing your mother's womb, I had already ordained you to be a prophet. You, you, you didn't come into the world by accident. God said, before your father met your mother, I had concluded my plan concerning you. Even when you were already in the womb, he said, I've settled the matter. Now the purpose he has for you is a good one. According to Jeremiah 29 verse 11 Jeremiah 29 verse 11 He said I know the thought That I think towards you Thoughts of good Not of evil That you might have an expected end He said no 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 There's nothing bad in your destiny When I created you I created you for a purpose I wanted you to become somebody I want you to succeed. I have a good plan for your life. Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 to 16, Galatians 1, 15 to 16, he said, God had separated me unto himself from my mother's womb. The reason you were not born a still bath the reason your mother did not abort your pregnancy is because God has a purpose for your life and it's a good purpose the fact that you are still alive today is a guarantee that God has a good purpose for your life that's why you are not dead yet the enemy could have killed you when you were an infant. But God kept you alive. Because he has a great purpose for your life. If you believe that, let me hear you say amen. amen. Some people reach the goal that God has for them. Like in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. Paul reached his goal. Before he died, he said, Hey, I've made it. And in the name of the one who called me, I prophesied to someone here today, You will make it. <laughs> Unfortunately, however, some people never made it. I mean, for example, consider Cain. Cain was the firstborn in the whole world. 
But he ended up becoming a vagabond. According to Genesis 4, verse 9 to 12. Genesis 4, 9 to 12. He ended up a vagabond, a wanderer. He was the firstborn of the whole world. Now, the goal of the arresters is to prevent you from reaching the goal that God has set for you. The primary assignment of the arrester is to make sure you don't become what God wants you to become. And the arrester will try various means to see if they could prevent you from reaching your goal. David had no problems until the day he was anointed to be king. But the moment he was anointed to be king in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11 to 13, 1 Samuel 16, 11 to 13, trouble began. According to 1 Samuel 17, verse 34 to 37, 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 37, it was a lion that came first. And if you read the story very well, the lion pretended that it was interested in one of the lamb. But as soon as David took the lamb from him, he said, I'm not after the lamb, I'm actually after you. <laughs> he took one lamb from him, he could have taken another, there were many of them, but he left the lamb alone. I said, uh -huh. I know you will defend the lamb. When the lion failed, a bear came. When the bear failed, Goliath came. When you get home, read 1 Samuel 17 very closely. And listen to what Goliath said. He said to the army of Israel, let one man to come and fight me. He knew he would defeat anybody. <laughs> Just send one man to come and fight me. If he defeats me, the nation of Philistine will become your nation. We will take us over. If I defeat him, the kingdom of Israel will become our own. The devil knew who was to be the king. Goliath wanted to make sure he would take over that kingdom before David can become king. But thank God, Goliath failed. Tonight, in the name that's above every other name, your arresters will fail. Why? Because God can always be a step ahead of the enemy. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. First Peter 5 verse 8 says, the, your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, is constantly walking about, seeking whom he may devour. He is constantly walking about looking for the next victim. The second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9, second Chronicles 16 verse 9 says, the eye of the Lord runs to and fro. The enemy is walking. The eye of God is running. So somebody will arrive first. Before the enemy can get to you, the Almighty God will arrive first. Now, arresters can be in two basic categories. 
external arrestors and internal arrestors. External arrestors can then be subdivided into two groups physical and spiritual. I will deal with external arresters first before we come to the internal arresters because God will deal with all of them tonight. The first category of external arresters that we want to look at will be the arresters that run in the generation hereditary before you were born they were already there waiting for you to come in 2nd Kings chapter 2 verse 19 to 22 2nd Kings chapter 2 verse 19 to 22 the men of Jericho came to Elisha and said sir <laughs> we have a beautiful city but we have problems. We have barrenness. We have premature death. Because our water is bitter. Everybody in Jericho was born into a city that was under a curse. A curse had been pronounced on Jericho since the day of Joshua. Joshua chapter 6 verse 26 Joshua 6 verse 26 Joshua pronounced a curse on Jericho and all those who were born after that were living under a curse and some people come from families that when you marry into that family you marry into a curse. I mean, some families, for example, when a woman gives birth to a child, if it's a girl, the mother must not taste salt or oil for seven days, or else the girl will die. If it's a boy, the mother must not taste salt or all for nine days or else the boy will die and not a joking matter and you ask why they said because long ago somebody in the generation ill treated a slave and the slave pronounced a curse on the family and people born years later kept on suffering under the curse I know <laughs> because I was born into such a family until Jesus saved my soul after that the curse was broken every curse in your family shall be broken tonight and then we see a classical example in the Bible, how God dealt with arresters coming from your roots. In Exodus chapter 14, from verse 1 to 28. Exodus 14, 1 to 28. My wife who led the prayers for Nigeria had already referred to it. The children of Israel thought they were free at last. But they were by the Red Sea. And then they looked back. What did they see? They saw the army that had kept their generations upon generations in bondage for more than 400 years coming after them again to take them right back into bondage. But then, God moved 
and drowned them all. He drowned them all because the Bible says the wind and the sea obey him. He told the sea to part in two so that the enemies coming from generation past can walk into the river or walk into the middle of the sea and be drowned. I will tell you a story and then you, you'll be ready to pray your prayer number one. You've heard it before, at least some of you. Two people fought. Two fathers fought. In a village somewhere in Ondo State. And the father, one of the two fathers fighting, one said to the other, by the time I finish with you, nobody will remember you came to the world. The other one thought it was the joke of an angry man. But 15 days later, he discovered it wasn't a joke because he died. His children came home to bury their father. Among the children was a firstborn who had just returned from Germany. He came home in a brand new car. After the burial of their father, on the way back to his place of work, he had an accident and died. They brought his dead body back home. The mother saw the greatest joy of her life dead. She collapsed and died. The other children came, buried their mother, buried their brother, on their way back, the next in line to the boy who died, had an accident and died. And it went on and on until there remained only one boy, only one boy in the family. And the one boy happened to be a student of medicine at Ibadan. He went home after doing the final burial of his last fellow, and the man who calls his father saw him and said, Ah, did I see one of you? He said, Okay, before I kill this one, I will touch on him a little. The boy returned to Ibadan, just went crazy, began to tear his books, tear his clothes, gather them together, set them on fire. The, the piggy ball took him to Arrow. They loaded him with drugs. When they thought it was better, he came back. And because he has born to everything he had, he went home to collect some money from his papa's uh, cocoa plantation. That man saw him. Ah, you are not already walking naked in the street. Okay, oh. The boy came back to the university again. Every book he bought, the dress he bought, tore them, burnt them. They took him back to Arrow. And he kept going to and fro, to and fro, until finally someone said, This is not a medical case. And they brought him to redemption camp. When he came here, he has not slept for 14 days. His eyes were crimson red. Anyway, to cut a long story short, we prayed. My father took over. When he became normal, we told him, don't go home yet. Finish your studies. The Almighty God will be responsible. I still remember the day like yesterday when he graduated as a medical doctor. When he came to my office in the Butenata, he was crying. The Almighty God intervened and dealt with that arrester from his root. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God. And say, Father, every arrest.
answer in my foundation arrest it right now right now open your mouth and cry to the almighty God arrest every arrester in my foundation arrest every arrester in my foundation Lord Drown them. Every arrest in my foundation, drown them. Drown them. Shall it be in Jesus' name? You may please be seated. Thank you. You have started very well. I pray you continue well. Second category of arresters are those who are just envious of your achievements. In number 16, verse 1 to 33, number 16, verse 1 to 33, Moses was minding his own business. He was just doing what God called him to do. He wasn't fighting anybody, he was minding his business. All of a sudden, some people ganged up against him. Kora, Data, and Abira. And before you knew it, they began to <laughs> assemble some people. And they say, let's, uh, let's challenge him. Are you the only one who can hear from God? Or we too can hear from God. Who said you should become our leader anyway? Why? What's, what's going on? Who ah. said I was minding my business as a shepherd man when God interrupted me and asked me to come and do this? I, I didn't plan for it. 
Eh, we don't want to hear. Okay, let's talk to the one who <laughs> who gave me the assignment. And the Almighty God spoke to Moses and said, Don't worry, I know what I will do. I will bury them alive. You see, many a times we tend to forget that the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24, verse 1. Many a times we tend to forget that the earth trembles in the presence of the Almighty God. Psalm 114, verse 7. Psalm 114, verse 7. Many a times we tend to forget that the Bible says when God looks on the earth, the air trembles. All he has to do is just look. And when he touches the hills, they begin to smoke. Psalm 104, verse 32. Psalm 104, verse 32. So those in your place of work, that you have not offended. You are just minding your own business. But they are ganging up against you. <laughs> uh, I have news for them tonight. They will hear from my God. That's why you must never take part in a revolt or a gang up against somebody who is just minding his own business. I will just give you one, one little example. There are so many. My father and the Lord told me this story. He started a church, a branch of the Redeemed Peace and Church of God in Oshobo several years ago and the church began to do well and all of a sudden the pastor there says the church is no longer part of the day it belongs to him and my father went to see him and says ah, sir <laughs> we started this church in the name of redeemed peace and church of God what's going on he said ah, Everybody here, they are my converts. Papa said, but you are not the Savior. You may have preached to them, but God is the one who saved their souls. He said, I don't want to hear. Get out of here if you don't want trouble. Papa said, okay, please, so don't, don't quarrel. Shall we pray so I can go? <laughs> Some people say, uh, oh, Why am I so gentle? It's because I know who my God is. While they were praying, a wind blew as if it was going to rain. But there was no cloud, there was nothing, so Papa came out, saw nothing, and, and left. By the following morning, that man was covered from head to toe in leprosy. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, every arrestor of my achievement, bury them alive. Open your mouth and pray. of my achievements. Let the ground open and swallow them all. Let the ground open and swallow them all. Shandra 
The third category of arresters are the enemies of progress. They're not worried as long as we don't make progress. If we just remain on one spot forever, no problem. But when you get to Joshua chapter 10, from verse 1 to 11, Joshua 10, from verse 1 to 11, you find an interesting story there. Five kings ganged up together against Joshua. Why? They said this young man is making too rapid a progress. Let us stop him. <laughs> and I'm sure many of you, you know what I'm talking about. You have no enemies as long as you go to them to beg for food. As long as you wear hand-me-downs. You come to them and they give you the dress that they have worn so much it is already faded. <laughs> That's fine. But then all, <laughs> all of a sudden, uh -uh, you began to break forth. Ah. They said, let's arrest him. Five kings gathered against one boy because they say, look at the way he's going. But I thank God, my God decided to bomb them. <laughs> he just sent down heavy stones from heaven. My God is the original bomber. And he's going to do some bombing here tonight. And I think any witch or wizard that may be present, you should begin to get nervous. Because from tonight, you won't fly again. I saw 66 verse 1. I saw 66 verse 1. 
says heaven is the throne of God the earth is his footstool <laughs> okay you know some years ago in the first auditorium we were having a convention and uh, we were very few in those days. The, the convention usually Friday night went by around midnight. I've already prayed for everybody, the sick, the barren, etc. And finally I wanted to pray for the pastors. So I said, all ministers come forward. And suddenly I had a communication a witch on my right was talking to a witch on my left saying it is time for us to intervene how many of you remember the day okay the old ones will do <laughs> the younger ones were not around them and I heard the men of God were coming forward the witches said it's time for them to intervene. So I had to say, hey, hey, Mr. Ogo, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and I said to the witches, I said, if you don't want to be buried within seven days, come out. I told everybody to close their eyes. But I remember one man who said, I'm sorry, Daddy, I didn't close my own. <laughs> I just heard one of them speaking. When I said witches will no longer be able to fly, he said, let's wait and see. I decree in the name of the one who called me every witch here tonight that will not repent the ground will swallow him or her So, so, the, so the, the, the Bible says um, heaven is the throne of, of God, the earth is his full stool, and means everything between heaven and earth is under the control of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse 18 to 23 Ephesians 1 verse 18 to 23 it says Jesus Christ is seated with the Father in heaven far above principalities and powers don't let anybody frighten you God is above every enemy you may have And in any case, the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every name must bow. <laughs> Some of the old ones who will remember this testimony, we had a Holy Ghost Congress a Christ the mass congress we used to call it then at the University of Ibadan several years no not at Ibadan Grammar School several years ago and there was this young man a lecturer at Amadubelo University who came to the congress on the last day years before he wanted to travel to America. 
And then his parents decided to hold a party to send him off. If I remember correctly, he came from somewhere in Undo State. And the one of the people who was guest at that send off party said, ah, The son of so and so <laughs> is going abroad. By the time he returns, he will become bigger than me, and his father now will begin to ride the car. So he said, Let's give him something to take along. So he put a charm on him. The young man arrived in America, and from the moment he arrived, fire began to burn inside his stomach. They were the best of doctors. They examined him from head to toe. There's nothing wrong with you. Ah. He said the fire is burning. He said he could hold it. But he checked everything. There's nothing wrong with you. He said, the one who is suffering knows he's suffering. I decree tonight every sickness, every disease that the doctors say they don't know the cause shall be healed here tonight. Anyway, he suffered throughout his stay in America, managed to get his PhD, came back to Nigeria, became a lecturer at the University, Amadubele University, but the pain continued, the fire continued. And then you heard that miracles always happen at the Congress. So he decided to come to Ibadan. And the devil put all manners of obstacles in his ways. The Congress started on Friday. He left on Friday. He couldn't arrive until Monday, just as we were about to finish. And I remember I was preaching. And he was in the crowd. Suddenly I heard somebody shouting, It is gone! It is gone! After we finished preaching, what is it that is gone? Then he told the story. Every plan that God did not plant in your body shall be uprooted tonight. But before you pray, I tell you another story, which some of the elders here know. They are true stories. I'm not making them up. A man came to church with his wife. He said, I don't know what's happening. The moment I began to make progress, problems came. He gave his life to Jesus. We began to pray for him. And all of a sudden, we couldn't see his wife. Sir, you, what, what's happening? You are coming, your wife is not coming. So we decided to do a follow-up. Sister, why are we not seeing you in church? He said, since I started coming to your church, I could no longer fly. Stand on your feet. And say, Father, of my progress. Bomb them. Bomb them. Come on. Bomb them, Daddy. Don't let them be able to fly again. Don't let them be able to fly again. Every enemy of my progress. Bomb them. Bomb them. Bomb them. Bomb them. Don't 
don't let the witches be able to fly again. Bomb them. Bomb them. Bomb them, Lord. Bomb them. Every one of them. Bomb them. Bomb them. Bomb them. Bomb them. Yes, Lord. Bomb every enemy of our progress here tonight. Every one of them, known and unknown. If they don't repent, bomb them, Lord. Bomb them. Bomb every one of them, Lord. Bomb them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bomb them, Lord. Bomb every one of them. Don't let any witch here be able to fly again. Never again. Bomb them. Oh yes, Lord. Bomb them. Children of the Shingere Makaka, Tunde Kere Makaka, Tunde Kere Makaka, Shingere Makaka. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. The next category of external enemies. That who want to arrest you are what the Bible calls family foes. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. Matthew 10, verse 36. Jesus Christ himself said it. The truth, the one who is the truth, said. A man's foes will be men of his own household. That's one of the worst forms of arresters. People you are living with, sleeping with, eating with, they know your plans. Because we think, <laughs> they are members of my family. You think they wish you well. That's several funny situations. One case that came to my mind quickly was the case of uh, a young man that uh, escaped assassination and somehow was able to grab one of the assassins. And that one said, it's your brother, your elder brother who sent us. So he came to the other brother. Why? 
because I'm the, I'm the one feeding you. Supply all your needs. He said, hey, that's your reason. I'm your elder brother. I'm the one supposed to be feeding you. Ah. So that's why you want, <laughs> you want to kill me. It's nothing new. It has been there since Genesis. The Almighty God told Joseph, He showed Joseph dreams of what he will become. In Genesis 37, verse 17 to 28, Genesis 37, verse 17 to 28, his brother said, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Let's kill him and see what will become of his dreams. His brothers, children of the same father. Finally, they sold him to slavery. They said, that's, that's good. Good readers. But glory be to God. The same brother still came to bow down to him. Every household enemy of any of you here will come and bow down before you. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 22 to 29, 1 Samuel 17, 22 to 29, when David came to the battlefront and saw Goliath threatening everybody, and he said, ah, who is this uh, giant? What is the reward for killing him? And they were telling him, no, oh, anybody who can kill him will become the in-law of the king. His brother, Eliab, had and said, what are you doing here? You are supposed to be in the bush looking after sheep and goat. You see, the, the brother had been jealous from the day they anointed him king. But by the time you read 1 Samuel 22 verses 1 and 2, 1 Samuel 22 verses 1 and 2, the same brother and all the others came under David and he became captain over them. I'm going to ask you to pray about these family foes, but some of you may think, what kind of prayer are you asking us to pray tonight? So I will tell you a story why you must pray this prayer with all your heart. True story. When I was in the primary school, there was a girl in my village. She was the fastest thing you ever saw. I mean, she could run. She was the fastest in what used to be called your province. The old people will, will remember those days. Well, they have, we had Western region, Eastern region, Northern region. And then we had your province and other provinces. And she, she qualified to go and run in the Western region. And all of a sudden, she died. Uh -uh. No sickness, nothing. She just died. Not too long after that, his father, on the point of death, began to confess to all the evils that he had done. And every witch that may be here, before you die, you will confess. <laughs> oh, man. 
I warned you that tonight will be hot. He said that he was the one who killed the daughter. And when people said, why? He said it was becoming too popular. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, every arrestor will be my family. Before they destroy me, destroy them. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Every arrestor within my family before they could destroy me. Finish them off. within the family every wolf behaving as if it's a sheep uh -uh. father before they destroy me help me now oh lord before they destroy me destroy them unless they repent first if they repent first well then there will be no problem but if they are determined to destroy me, destroy them. to you, Lord. Just have your way, Lord. Have your way. Jesus mighty name we have prayed so shall it be in Jesus name please be seated and just in case you think I'm being too tough <laughs> I'm sure some of you had the testimony of a brother who was always uh, having very good assessments and then all of a sudden, instead of promotion, they sacked him. And he came to the Holy Ghost service when we were seeing the first auditorium. And the word of God came and said that there's someone here. There's someone close to you is going to die within a week. That you shouldn't be sad. Because he's the one behind your problem. The following week, his father died. The moment his father died, they recalled him in his place of work and gave him double promotion. Every person in the family standing against your progress. If they don't repent, my father will deal with them. I 
And then the fifth category will be forces that are against you simply because of your closeness with God. The reason they hate you is because you love Jesus. Because you are serving God. You are communicating with God. They don't like it. They don't like your prayers. And in case you think I'm joking, there are several people who could tell you that, no, 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 that's true. I've seen a wife who said to the husband, your prayers are too many. Why are you praying so much? <laughs> but in Second Kings chapter one, verse nine to twelve. Second Kings chapter one, verse nine to twelve. We have a case there of Elijah sitting on the mountain top just communicating with God he wasn't quarreling with anybody but then the king sent 50 soldiers and a captain to go and arrest him and I like Elijah <laughs> he just roasted them And the king sent another 50 soldiers with their captain and he roasted them again. You see, the, the, the problem with many of us is that we have this tendency of thinking that Jesus Christ is only the Lamb of God. Yes, he is the Lamb, but he's also the Lion. God is love, but God is also the consuming fire. Somebody said if you are all sugar, people you will use you to drink tea. If you don't know once in a while to be the son of the lion. Uh, these people will just be walking over you, stamping over you. In the name that's above every other name, every arrester will be arrested tonight. How, how come? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got into trouble. Because they said, we will no longer bow down to idols. We won't bow down to idols. We will serve the living God. That's why they got into trouble. That's why they got thrown into the fire. <laughs> but thank God the fourth man was there. And it's those who threw them into the fire who died, not they. How come Daniel got into trouble in Daniel chapter 6? It's because he will not compromise. The other said he is not, we can't find anything against him. He won't take bribes, he won't blend. That the only way we can get him is if we ask him not to pray. <laughs> when praying becomes an offense. God has to arise. I don't know which of the stories to tell you. Maybe I should tell you this one that uh, many of the elders will remember. One of my sons went to do youth service in a college in Benin a girl's school somewhere and the vice principal there at that time was completely against Christ he hated Christ so he made a rule nobody must call the name of Jesus Christ 
in that college. He was vice principal. In the meantime, my son had converted some girls. Even the principal was afraid of this man because they knew he was seriously occultic. So, the girl decided that now we already know Jesus. We, we can't do but pray and talk to him. And so they began to meet in secret. When it is dark, they will go and sit on in the in the middle of the football field and begin to pray. One day, the vice principal saw them and said, "Ah, when I said nobody should mention the name of Jesus Christ in this college, you girls, you are here." So he wrote down their names. He said, by tomorrow, you will be expelled. The poor girls ran to their youth uh, copper teacher and told him what happened. The youth copper said, God, what have I done? He lifted up his eyes to God and said, please, God, if anybody is going to suffer, let it be me. Don't let it be these innocent girls intervene. In the meantime, the VP has gone home, vice principal has gone home, told his uh, wife that early tomorrow I'm going to expel some girls because they were calling the name of Jesus. So it was 8, 8 a.m. the following morning. And so the wife saw that uh, he wasn't ready to go for assembly where he would do the expulsion. She went to the door of the bedroom and knocked. Papa Bomboy, Papa Bomboy. <laughs> Papa Bomboy, Papa Bomboy. When she opened the door, pa Papa Bomboy was dead. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God. And say, every force trying to interfere between you and I, Almighty God, roast them, roast them. Send out your fire, O oh Lord. Force trying to interfere in the relationship between me and you, Lord. Arrest them. Arrest them. Almighty God, every force trying to interfere. In the relationship between me and you, O God, roast them. Roast them. Send down the fire. And roast them. Thank you, Father. 
thoughts that won't let me pray, every thought that won't let me worship you, every thought that won't let me serve you, every thought against me because I am close to you, Father, roast them, roast them all, roast them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. You may please be seated. Are you tired? <laughs> because we are not halfway yet. Oh, thank you, Daddy. The Lord says there's someone here tonight. He said, in less than 24 hours, you will shout, the siege is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then he says there's someone here, he said, you've defeated them before, but now they seem to be regrouping. He said you will defeat them again. Oh, thank you, Father. And I said, there's someone here tonight. He said, I will do a new thing. He said, because some of your former enemies will begin to defend you. Okay. Now, external enemies. Uh, easy to deal with. The real problems are the internal ones. And I, I will just touch a few of them. Arrestor number one among the internal ones is your appetite. Appetite for food. I told those who came to the Holy Communion service yesterday, I said, a meal can arrest a destiny. And I gave you the example. <clears throat> that in Genesis 25, verse 29 to 34, Genesis 25, verse 29 to 34, Esau ate one meal, one meal, one pottage, a plate of pottage. And from that day onward, he sold his birthright and his destiny was arrested. So that when the time came, when he should have been blessed, when the day of his breakthrough came, in Genesis 27, verse 30 to 37, Genesis 27, verse 30 to 37, somebody has got the blessing. So that even when he cried to his father, when he wept bitterly, I said, Ah, Papa, don't you have just one, at least one blessing left? The father said, Ah, I've already made him your Lord. He said, you will serve him. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 13. First Corinthians 6 verse 13. The Bible says, meat for the belly, belly for meat, both of them shall be destroyed. 
There are some of you, your stomach is a problem. The time when you are supposed to be fasting, you want to eat food, food, food. There are some of us here who have not fasted a single day since we all began. Philippians chapter 3 verse 19, Philippians 3 verse 19 says, If your belly is your God, then your end will be destruction. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 27, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 27, <laughs> Paul said, I fast often. I fast often. I know some of you are already complaining. We, we don't know what's wrong with daddy now. Every year, fast, fast. We fasted a hundred days. He said, that's not enough. Add 40 to recharge your battery. This year now he said 50. Only God knows how many days he will say next year. You wait and see. <laughs> I'm going to be 74 in less than a month. I'm still fasting. So what's your excuse? If I ask you to fast and I'm eating, <laughs> Then you can complain. I told you that those who are 70 and above are exempted, but the exemption does not include me. I'll tell you two stories. <laughs> I will tell you two stories. Both of them had to do with me. I went home on holidays and uh, they prepared me pandered yam, uh, which I'm sure you know is my favorite food, with bush meat. <laughs> uh, serious combined okra soup. <laughs> I can see some of you already smelling the food. <laughs> As I was about to eat, I had God clearly saying, Don't eat. <laughs> I said, Daddy, I'm on holidays. Mm. And I know who prepared this food. There's no poison in it. So no danger. At least a man must relax once in a while. Abby? So I, I wanted to eat again. I had him say, Son, don't eat. The temptation was too much. I ate. <laughs> Just as I finished eating, information came that my elder sister had been knocked down by smallpox and they have sent for me to come and pray <laughs> hey, you want to face smallpox with a belly full of pandadia? When I got to her and I saw how she was covered from head to toe with smallpox, 
I realized why God said, don't eat. I ran to the back of the house. I put my hand in my throat. <laughs> I brought out the food by force. And then I went and confronted smallpox. I thank God that by the second day, my sister was completely well again. That's one story. I'm going to pray in a moment. I remember that one just before I came in here and I said, uh, I, I need to tell this for the sake of the young ones. I had done something good for a member of the family. And she decided to come and say thank you. And she prepared a saddle portage. I mean, the thing was yellow. You could smell the... Oh! I was very young then. I was just in the secondary school. And my mother had told me, never eat out when I'm not there. Never. So she brought the food, I turned her, I took it from her, he said, go ahead, eat. I said, I will, I will, very, very soon. My mother came. I didn't touch the food. So I showed it to my mother. She, my mother put her two hands on her head. Who brought this? I said, so and so. He said, oh God, oh God. The only son I have. I said, what's the problem? He said, hey, you have eaten part of it. I said, no. You told me never to eat. I didn't. Uh, hmm. Throughout that night, because I was sleeping in the same room with my mother, she would wake me up. Are you all right? <laughs> I said, I'm all right. No stomach problem. I said, no. You mean you didn't eat that? I said, I did By the following morning, that thing that was yellow and had become black, my mother said, come and see what I'm talking to you about. He took a little bit of it, threw it to a dog. The dog ran. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God. Father, don't let my belly destroy me. Open your mouth and pray. for food, destroy me. Don't let my belly destroy me. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Let my belly destroy me. Ah, don't let my belly destroy me. But please, Lord, I beg you tonight. Don't let my belly destroy me. Don't let my belly destroy me. 
Don't let my belly destroy me. Don't let my belly destroy me. Bear, I beg you, Lord God Almighty, don't let my belly destroy me. Don't let my belly destroy me. Please, Daddy. Don't let my belly destroy me. Thank you, Father. Let my belly destroy me, please, Lord. Don't let my belly destroy me. Don't let my belly destroy me. Don't let me eat poison. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. You are praying very strongly when we are dealing with external enemies. You better pray even more strongly when we are dealing with the internal ones. Because the external ones are gone now. And we need to deal with the internal ones because those are the ones you carry about. The second arrestor that is internal is lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. Particularly the hunger for unholy sex. In Genesis 35, verse 22. Genesis 35, verse 22. The Bible talks about Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob. The Bible said this young man saw the young wife of his father and went into her. The father heard and kept quiet. In fact, if you read the story, you'll be amazed. That verse 22. He said, This young man went in unto his father's young wife, and the father had it. Full stop. And they just continued the story. The father pretended that he didn't hear anything. He pretended he didn't know anything. He just kept quiet. He waited until the day of his death. When there is no room for, for maneuvering. He gathered all the children together. And started with this firstborn. Genesis 49 from verse 1 to 4. Genesis 49, verse 1 to 4. He said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. You are supposed to be the best of all I am. He said, but you will not excel. He finished cursing him and died. So that there be no room for repentance. Loss of the flesh. Judges 16 verse 1 to 31 is another example. Judges 16 verse 1 to 31. Tells us the story of Samson. Power 
powerful man of God, highly anointed, and I've heard several people say, so-called men of God, they say, your own is too much. After all, we commit adultery and the ministry is still growing. I said, okay, sir. One day will be one day. I've had one who even said to me, uh-uh. Jesus Christ said, if your brother offends you 70 times, seven times in a day, you should forgive him. I said, yes, he said so. Uh-huh. He said, you should forgive me then if I commit adultery not just about seven times in a week. I told him, sir, you will split hell wide open. He said, sit down there. Listen to me and listen very well. Those of you who think adultery and fornication is something to joke with. One of the greatest arresters of destiny is immorality. Samson was a mighty man of God, highly anointed, went into the house of a harlot. The enemies had, they surrounded him. He slept till midnight. Then he got up and said, uh -huh. Let me see any of you who can come against me. The, the enemy went to hide him. The gate of the city had been shut against him. He got there, shook the gate open, carried it to the top of a mountain and said, You will suffer before you bring your gate back. Mighty man of God. But it was a woman that got him. When finally the day of judgment came, a mighty man of God became a prisoner in the dungeon of the enemy. The one who, when he arose, enemies will flee, became somebody who was dancing in the prison of the enemy. I will tell you a story. <sighs> when I was much younger, I was a young man in my village. We were about the same age. We're not, equal, we're not even sure who is older than who. And I'm talking of 1956. So you know how long ago. I'm talking of a time when in my village, only one man had a car. And he didn't live in the town. He, he would come once in a while. So the rich people, people you could call rich, are those who had bicycles. And in those days, there were two popular brands of bicycles. One is called the Raj, the other is called Rally. How many of you remember those days? Uh, you are old then. <laughs> Rally was uh, like a Mercedes S-Class in my village there. This boy, young as he was, everything he touched prospered. He had a brand new rally bicycle. And then there was this elderly man in the village who had a very young wife. The girl was far from him in age. I think they married because of uh, family arrangements. And so this, my friend, uh, saw a young lady, the husband is old, so, and the young lady saw a young man with plenty of money, and so they began to interact. 
Now the old man discovered and called a compound meeting and told the elders, help me beg this boy to leave my wife alone. I know I never come near. What has gone past is gone. Please leave my wife alone. Because in those days, things have changed now. <laughs> If a man finds you fooling around with his wife, they don't take you to court. They put something on the wife that is called don't climb. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It means if you climb, you die. So after the old man warned this young man and the young man didn't listen, he put don't climb on his wife. Now the elders, they are all pretending as if they don't know what I'm talking about. And that's all right. The elders will tell you that <laughs> if you climb a woman on whom there is no, that there is a notice, don't climb. An invisible notice. What will happen is that after you've done what you have done, you begin to somersault. <laughs> Now, if the fellow somersaults first time, second time, provided he doesn't somersault the third time, there is still a cure. So when you see somebody somersaulting like that, the solution is hold him down and cry for help. So this, my young friend, went into the house of the young wife when everybody had gone to the farm. And he began to somersault. First time, second time, was crying to the woman, hold me down, hold me down. But terrified, instead of holding him down, the lady ran out. And so this young man with tremendous potential died naked stand on your feet cry to God and say Father don't let my son set in the noon time go ahead talk to the almighty God don't let my son say it in the afternoon, please. Don't let my flesh kill me. Don't let my flesh destroy me. Don't let my son say it in the afternoon. You better pray. This is serious. Don't let my son say it in the afternoon. Don't let my son set in the afternoon. Don't let my son set in the afternoon. I beg you, Lord. Don't let the loss of the flesh cause my son to set in the afternoon. Please, please, Lord. Do something about my flesh tonight. Oh Lord, don't let my flesh cause my son to set in the afternoon. Please, Daddy. Please 
this law, don't let my sun set in the afternoon. Don't let my sun set in the afternoon. Don't let my sun set in the afternoon. And don't pray for yourself alone. Pray for your children. Pray for your relatives. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Please, Lord, don't let the loss of the flesh cause our sun to set in the afternoon. Please, Daddy. Please, Lord. Let my flesh cause my sun to set in the afternoon. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Don't let the loss of my flesh be my waterloo. Don't let my sun set in the afternoon. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Will you please be seated? Another internal arrester of destiny. Is laziness. That's why some people can't pray. They are lazy. They know God answers prayers. <laughs> and they can't even pray for one hour. They are lazy. If it is talking, they can talk for three hours non stop. Talking nothing. They can discuss politics, discuss economy of the nation, discuss everything rather than pray. Prayer is hard work, but it pays. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4, it says, The soul of the slogger desires and has nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24, Proverbs 12, verse 24 says, The hand of diligent bear it to rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Lazy people never reach their goal. They can't work hard. They just want to play. Some of us have heard prophecies that came directly, and you know that you know that you know this is for me. Then when it comes to working it into reality, praying it into existence, you fail. 
One great man of God was talking to me just last January. He said, it's only now I realize that there were several promises of God for me. I just sit down at home waiting for them to come to pass instead of doing something about it. I said, thank God you are not dead yet, so it's not yet too late. Proverbs 19 verse 15 Proverbs 19 verse 15 Say the idle soul shall suffer hunger That's the word of the Lord The idle soul shall suffer hunger Proverbs 23 verse 21 Proverbs 23 verse 21 says Drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags I remember years ago when we began to attend Kenya Taking Camp meeting and we began to learn about faith, confession of faith, that whatever you say, God hears, He will do. Now I remember one of my friends then, every day we wake up in the morning, I have a car, I have a car, I have a car. I claim it, I have a brand new car. I claim it. Ten years later, it was sea trekking. Not that God did it here. <laughs> but God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God doesn't reward laziness. Like I used to tell my children who are students. It's good to attend fellowship, to worship, to pray, to study the Bible. Read your books. Because if you don't, you will fail. Ah, but it is written, the Holy Spirit is supposed to help us. I say, ah, yeah, the Bible said the Holy Spirit will remind you of what you have learned. If you've not learned nothing, you will have nothing to remind you of. That is supposed to be our helper. I will show if you fail, he will comfort you. Hard work. I thank God I learned hard work from my father. In his lifetime, nobody is allowed to be idle at all. The only time you are idle is when you are fast asleep in the night. If we are tilling the, the, the ground in the farm and the rain begins to fall, if the rain is not too heavy, we keep going. And some of the elders say, I know what I'm talking about. That's the way it was. As a matter of fact, there is a saying that when you are planting the maize of a particular season, your belly will be dry, your back will be wet. How many of you elders know what I'm talking about? In other words, you walk even when it's raining. You only stop you come out of the rain, when the rain is so heavy, it won't allow you to see. And the moment you come into the heart, you have something else to do. Peeling melon, removing maize from the cob, something to keep going. Never an idle moment. And I thank my God that I have such a father. Because I'm benefiting from it now. Laziness will clothe a man with rags. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Hard working fellow will always be on top. You know the story. Two people went to consult the oracle as to their future. 
And the oracle said to one, he said, Ah, you are going to be king. He said, Me, yeah. the oracle said, Yes, you are king. <laughs> and the oracle turned to the second fellow and said, You will be a servant. Uh uh. God, what have I done? Why must I be a servant? So he got home, got a cutlass, got a hoe, gathered some yam, some maize that he had, and walked far into the bush, into a no man's land. And he began to cultivate the ground. He kept saying to himself, I refuse to be a servant. I refuse to be a servant. When his back is aching, he tells the back, you better don't ache because I refuse to be a servant. Is there somebody here who refuses to be a servant? In the meantime, the one that he says is going to be a king sat down at home. <laughs> king of tomorrow. Of Balala. And sat down there doing nothing. The oracle cannot fail. I'm going to be a king. Suddenly there was a famine in the town. In the meantime, the man who was cultivating, the one who was supposed to be a servant, had been piling up harvest. He kept on planting, harvesting storing everything and when the harvest was saw in the city a hunter stumbled on the farm where this man had oh storehouse of yams of maize of bees of everything and went to town and said i have discovered where there is food and the people in the town came to this man please give us food he said money we have no money left. We have spent everything. Well, <laughs> you want my food? Then you have to be my servants. And so the one that they said was going to be a servant became a king. Because the town shifted. And then one day the one that the other people said was going to be a king arrived. And the fellow was to be a servant looked at him and said, ah, is that not uh, a balala? The diligent hands are there rule. Many of us are where we are today because of laziness, not because of enemy from the father's house, not because of enemy from anywhere. We happen to be our own enemy. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God. This time, pray this prayer with all your heart and say, Father, let me stop being my own enemy. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Don't let laziness destroy me. Don't let laziness destroy me. Help me, Lord, help me. Don't let laziness destroy me. Let me stop being my own enemy. Let me stop being my own enemy. Lord God Almighty, don't let laziness destroy me. Don't let laziness destroy me. Don't let laziness destroy me. Please, Lord, let me wake up. Let me wake up. Let me become diligent. Let me become hard-working. Don't let me be my own enemy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Don't let laziness destroy me. 
don't let laziness destroy me. Please help me, Lord. Let me stop being my own enemy. Let me stop being my own enemy. Let me stop being my own enemy. Don't let laziness destroy me. Don't let laziness destroy me. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. You may please be seated. Don't worry, I'm about to close. One of the greatest arresters of destiny that is internal is temper anger violent temper hmm. Exodus chapter 2 verse 11 to 15 Exodus 2 verse 11 to 15 tells us what happened when Moses went out to see his brethren. And he saw an Egyptian treating an Israeli. The Bible says he looked right and left, saw nobody was watching. He killed the fellow and buried him in the desert. And then he ran. From that day onward, the devil knew. <laughs> hey, deliverer, I've got you. You know, I've taught this lesson before in the School of Disciples. And I gave the illustration of what we call the Joker card. And by the way, I have a book entitled Arresting the Arresters. What I'm teaching is not from that book. Because I can't finish everything in one day. If you want, you can go to CRM Bookshop and get the book. You will get more information. I gave the illustration of a joker card in those days when we used to play cards when you distribute cars and you look at your own and the joker is there and you know you have won it doesn't matter what the other fellow has let him put down everything he has king, aces, queen, everything you just put down the joker and you have won the day the devil discovered that the Moses had a violent temper. He knew he had him. He had a joker card. And all the time Moses was traveling, leading the children of Israel to the promised land, the devil didn't say a word. Keep going, man. I have the joker card. Well, you know what happened in Numbers chapter 20, verse 7 to 12. Numbers 20, 7 to 12. God spoke to Moses, speak to the rock, and it will bring forth water. But he started talking to the people, you stiff naked people, must we bring you water out of the rock? He forgot the instruction of God because as he spoke, his anger arose. And instead of speaking to the Lord, to the rock, he hit the rock twice. 
And God said, you won't get to the promised land. And Satan just kept laughing. <laughs> I, I got him. I played my joker card. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9 says, Anger rests in the bosom of fools. When you are feeling angry, remember to tell yourself, don't be a fool. You can destroy so much in minutes because of anger. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, Proverbs 16, verse 32, it says, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And you have to talk to God about your temper. And, but I never get angry unless somebody provoke me. That's true. <laughs> Provocation is what leads to anger. But the one who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. I mean, you have heard people say when they want to say they are angry. What do they say? They said I was mad. Anger is temporary madness. The mad people do a lot of horrible things. I will tell you a true story. I heard the story only last month. And it shook me to my bones. A man bought a brand new car. And he was washing it. He was adorning the car. Cleaning it. Cleaning the car and so on. And his son, a young boy, I think, I can't remember the age, maybe four or five, was scratching something on the new car with a sharp object on the other side of the car. And the man, eh, my new car, this boy, he was scratching. In his anger, he grabbed the first thing he could lay hands on, and it was a hammer. True story. And began to smash the hand of the boy. By the time he came to himself, the fingers of the boy were already mangled. He rushed the boy to the hospital and they had to amputate all the fingers of his right hand. The following day, the boy said to him, Daddy, when will my fingers grow? The man went out to the car and he looked at what the boy wrote on the car, what he scratched on the car. You know what he read? The boy wrote, I love you, daddy. The man couldn't bear the pain. He committed suicide. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, don't let me destroy my own future. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. This is not a joking matter. Please 
said it. Don't let me destroy my own future. Through anger, through temper. Please, Lord, please, Lord, don't let me destroy my own future. Please. Please. Don't let me destroy my own future. Please. Don't let me destroy my own future. Don't let me destroy my own future. Don't let me destroy my own future. Please have mercy on me. Don't let me destroy my own future. Lord. Don't let me destroy my own future. Thank you, Jesus. Please, Lord, don't let me destroy my own future. Have mercy on me. Thank you, Almighty. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your holy name. Have mercy on me, Lord. Don't let me destroy my own future. Deal with every form of violent temper in me. Uproot every root of anger. Please don't let me destroy my own future. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Don't let me destroy my own future. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Conclusion. It is impossible to arrest a holy man. Like we have already heard in Second Kings chapter one, verse nine to twelve. Second Kings one nine to twelve. When they came to arrest. Elijah, he roasted them. You can't arrest a holy man. If you try it, he will arrest you instead. Second King chapter 6, verse 13 to 20. Second King 6, 13 to 20. He 
the text that we started with. In Daniel 6, verse 1 to the end, Daniel 6, verse 1 to the end, the man who, or the man who threw Daniel into the den of lions, they ended there. They were the ones that the lion ate. You can't arrest a holy man. You will get arrested instead. And I can give you examples, but maybe just one will do. The very first year on this camp, after the convention, they brought a woman in after everybody had gone. Almost raving mad. And she started confessing. She said, his group heard that we were coming to begin to use this place as convention ground. So they came to come and take over the place before we could arrive. And the Holy Spirit arrested them. Mention three of them. Of the three, one became a hunchback, one became completely mad, and the third died. You can't arrest a holy man. His God will fight for him. You try to arrest a holy man, he will arrest you. Secondly, it is impossible to keep a soul winner arrested. If somebody is an incurable soul winner, always witnessing for Jesus, always winning souls, and you say you arrest him, it's God who send an angel to release him. Acts chapter 5, verse 17 to 25. Acts 5, 17 to 25. They arrested Peter, put him in prison, and the angel came, released him, and said, continue. Acts chapter 12, verse 5 to 11. Acts 12, 5 to 11. They arrested him again. This time they were even going to kill him. Again, an angel came in the night, released him, and said, continue. Acts 16, verse 16 to 39. Acts 16, verse 16 to 39. They arrested Paul and Silas because they were preaching, witnessing, telling people about Jesus Christ. Even the demon in the day said, these are the people showing us the way of salvation. Because of that, they arrested them, threw them into jail. God sent an earthquake to release them. And the jailer became the servant of the jail. You can't keep a soul winner down. Impossible. So if you are not a soul winner, you are denying yourself of several things. But then, how can you witness for someone you don't know? <laughs> you don't know Jesus Christ? As your Lord and Savior, you have not tasted Him. What testimony are you going to share? I have spoken about the internal enemies, anger, laziness, uh, loss of the flesh, appetite, etc., etc. You can't overcome all these forces unless you are in Christ. 
I mean, the first time somebody told me to fast for three days and three nights without food, I said, you want to commit murder? <laughs> fast three days? Me? Because the only fast I had ever done before then was on Good Friday. And it's usually from morning to 12 noon. <laughs> now this fellow is asking me to fast for uh, three days and three nights. But then I met the Lord Jesus Christ and things changed. I didn't talk about several other things that I could have mentioned, but because of time, I didn't mention pride as an eternal arrester, etc., etc. It is only when you are in Christ that you become a new creature that all things pass away and all things have become new. You can only overcome these eternal arresters if Christ is in you, because Philippians 4 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. That's why if your salvation is not genuine and you are trying to overcome all these internal arresters, you fail. How many times at the beginning of the year you have had a new year resolution? This new year, uh, I will not do this. I will not do that. Within five days, you've done it again and again. Why? You can't do it on your own flesh. The arm of flesh will fail you. You can't overcome laziness on your own. <laughs> It's either Christ will help you or situation will compel you. I remember when I was at the University of Lagos, one of my of the people walking there, junior to me, we, we invited him to become me to money prayer meeting at a butemet time. In those days we arrived at five thirty, we finished by six. He said me. To arrive at 5.30 means I must wait before 5. He said, when I have not committed murder. But when the enemy got him, when all of a sudden he, he, he was going mad, <laughs> waking up at 5 o'clock was no longer a problem. But you don't need to wait till the enemy had grinded your nose in the dust before you arrest the arresters Christ is willing to do it for you he takes Jesus so tonight don't deceive yourself if you are not sure of your salvation please come and seek genuine salvation if you truly surrender your life to Jesus Christ he will make all the difference. I will count from 1 to 15 because I can see some of you are very, very far away. Before I say 15, come. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. We will deal with that. We pray just one more prayer and we will be almost ready to go. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come now before I count 15 and you must come fast you must come diligently you must move this is a very very special night come and give your life to Jesus I'm counting now one Two. 
a man is in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things. Three. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. Ten. Eleven. Those of you who have arrived, you begin to pray. Keep call on Jesus, tell him, I've come to surrender my life to you. Don't wait for anybody else. Talk to him if you really mean business. Twelve. And those of you on the way, pray as you come. Cry unto him, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Have mercy. Thirteen. Lord, I'm tired of a life of sin. I don't want my flesh to destroy me. Save my soul. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Fourteen. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And please, the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people. <clears throat> let's intercede for them. Let's ask the Almighty God to please save their souls and wash them clean from all their sins. Let's, let's cry out to God for them that God will give them a brand new beginning. That God will change their hearts and give them the heart of flesh. Let's pray for them. Intercede for them, brethren, please. Those of you on the way, hurry up. I'm about to pray now for salvation. Thank you, Father. Intercede for them, brethren, that God will wash them clean with his blood. And those of you in front, cry to him, Lord, please save my soul. Forgive all my sins. I will serve you from now on. Give me the new salvation. That kind of salvation that will overcome the flesh, overcome Satan, overcome all demonic forces. That kind of salvation, Lord, that will be living holy. Give it to me tonight. Please save my soul. Lord, please save my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. In 
Jesus mighty name we have prayed <coughs> Savior I want to thank you I want to thank you for your word and I want to thank you for all these people that have come forward to surrender to you please receive them in Jesus name save their souls forgive all their sins give them a new beginning write their names in the book of life please Lord don't let them go back to sin and from now on any time they call on you please answer them by fire thank you my father glory be to your holy name in Jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen. Amen Please cancel us Can you come over I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward tonight I want to promise you That by the special grace of God from now on I'll be praying for you So I'm going to need your names Your address and your prayer requests the counselors are coming they will give you cards which i want you to fill very quickly and then return to them supply the information i want and i promise you i'll be praying for you counselors god bless you let's move a little faster let's move a little faster Keep coming, counselors. Thank you, counselors. Keep coming. Thank you, counselors. They are, they are on their way. They, they will reach you very soon. So just hold on. They will, they will reach you. Keep moving, keep moving, counselors, please. Let's move a little faster. Thank you. Keep moving to my extreme left. Keep moving, counselors. Thank you. While our brothers and sisters are filling their forms, I want you to think within yourself and look at the areas where, where you know you need help. Is it with your anger or with your loss of the flesh or with your appetite or with laziness or with pride? Think about it and on your own now. Talk to God. Talk to God. And say, help me in this area, oh Lord. I need help. I need help. I need help in this particular area, Lord. I need the help urgently. Help me, oh Lord. Help me. You have just about three or so minutes to talk about that to God. You know yourself more than anyone else. Please, Lord, I need help in this area. Maybe it is your stomach that is your trouble. Maybe it is your loss of the flesh, the hunger for sex. Maybe it is pride. Maybe it is laziness. Maybe it is anger. Talk to God. God, have mercy on me tonight. Don't let me live here with any arrester not yet arrested. Talk to God.
Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord answer your prayers in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray one more prayer before we thank God for the evening, listen to two or three testimonies, and be gone. When you arrest a man, you slow him down. Even when he's free, he is not where he should be. He will have lost time, lost space, lost achievements. I'm believing God with all my heart, with all of us tonight, that all arresters are already arrested. But I'm sure some of you will agree with me. We are not where we ought to be. And so we need to pray one more prayer. And if I were you, I would pray that prayer with all my heart. So you please stand on your feet. It's the last prayer for this night. Or at least maybe second to the last. And you lift your voice with him and say, Father, everything I have lost, restore to me. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Everything I have lost as a result of the action of arresters, please restore to me, Lord. Restore, restore, restore. Everything I have lost as a result of arresters, the ground that I have lost, the opportunities I have lost, the blessings I have lost. Restore to me, Almighty God, restore to me everything I have lost. Restore to me, Almighty God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus.
Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The great restorer will restore to you everything you have lost. Every opportunities that you lost because of arrests, they will come back to you this month. Every blessings that the arrestor didn't allow you to arrive on time to receive, they shall come back in Jesus' name. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Please let's be seated. It's the following people should come quickly to share their testimonies for two, two minutes. Sister Rosalind Okuta. Rosalind Okuta. Sister Ibilola Oye Badejo. Pastor Ayo Follow on Shore. Pastor Sunday Oyewa. Pastor Sandy Oyewa, I hope I got it correct. Sister Mojisola Toya. Sister Mojisola.